Okay, so now we're going to talk about getting the stylus ready. So uh, one thing I will say is with the Apple Pencil, you're not going to have to do much of anything. Uh, they just seem to work. The only thing you really have to do is basically take the Apple Pencil and, you know, connect it, and it'll, it'll run you through some prompts there for connecting. But uh, as far as it goes, um, and one thing I will say with this is that it actually charges really quickly. Uh, and if you need a quick charge, you can plug it in, and within about 30 seconds, it'll give you... I think it's 30 minutes of use or it's 18 seconds, uh, but it's basically a quick charge that'll still give you time to finish up your work, save out your files and move on. Uh, and likewise with that, as far as saving your files go, just keep in mind, every time you go back to the gallery, it'll pretty much capture where you're at. So you don't actually have to go to like file save or anything like that. Uh, but I do that, I'll, I'll shift to the gallery every so often to make sure that I'm kind of saving the work. Um, so now with setting up the stylus, you're going to go into your uh, gear icon here and you're going to go up to or down to connect third party stylus. Okay, so this is going to be if you're not using an Apple Pencil and you see right here, it's going to tell you that if you're using the Apple Pencil, there's no need to connect, uh, but you can use things like the Adonit, Pogo and Wacom has got one. So you can basically go with any of those and this is where you're going to set those up. Now, obviously, I don't have uh, any of these devices to use, but it's going to be pretty self-explanatory. That's one of the neat things about uh, the iPad and devices like this and apps. They're, they're pretty much a walkthrough. Um, but, you know, you're going to have to connect it and then uh, set it up through here. So, again, if you're using the Apple Pencil, we're just going to leave that to none. The other thing that I'll talk to you about is the, um, the pressure curve. So, this pressure curve also affects how any of these, uh, these um, styluses work based upon them having pressure sensitivity controls. So if I was to take, I'll show you what pencil I'm using here. It's a modified technical pencil. I'll make sure that any of the brushes that I have uh, that I utilize in this course will be supplied to you so that you have the same settings because I do make a lot of setting changes to my brushes. So I wanna make sure you're using the same ones. So with the technical pencil, if I was to bear down, let's put it right to about the middle uh, setting and it'll give you, let me do it with the other hand so you can see what it's saying there. It's saying about 20% of the size full opacity, okay? So if I was to draw with this and lightly press down and then press down as hard as I can based on this file size, that's what you're going to get. So remember that based on the file size, the brush can look very different. So you got to be working with the same file size that I uh, started with here. Um, so again, I'll do that one more time. That's with heavy max pressure. So with light pressure, almost nothing of the weight of the pencil. Okay, and you see if I start to turn the pencil to the side, I get a thicker line. That's the other neat thing about this type of stylus. It, it recognizes tilt and it gives you line variation based on that as well. I typically draw more or less with the pencil up the entire time, but it's there if you need it. And we'll talk about that as we apply paint and things like that. So knowing that this is what you get with your, your pressure, you can go back into your pressure curve and you can modify this. Now I will recommend using a brush. Let's let's get back out of here. Remember two finger tap is undo. Uh, or if you got a lot of stuff on the screen, three finger tap is a forward or a redo. If you got a lot of stuff on the screen, you just want to get rid of it. I'll do a three finger swipe down and just hit cut. So it's just a quick way to kind of get it out of your way without having to select or erase or anything like that. Let's go to a brush that has more variation. So let's go to inking and uh, my uh, sword brush is one of my favorites for inking. Again, I'll make sure you have access to these. Uh, so now if we do this, let's turn this sucker all the way up. Just so we got a lot of variation there. Okay. So this is if we were trying to get this nice brush kind of effect with a very thin to a very thick tapered line. Okay. So now the reason why I recommend doing something like this is now when you do the pressure curve, you're going to see the difference. So if we pull this way down like this. And I try to recreate the same thing. Look how much difference there is. And I try to apply the same pressure there. So a huge difference in what the pressure curve means uh, for the way that it reacts. So then here I'm going to be able to get almost no thin line. So right about here is where I found it to work. You're going to have to play with this and see. You know, I can't decide this one for you because basically we all create very differently. Uh, and this is going to be based upon the strength of your hand and how you utilize uh, your own strength with the um, this device and this stylus. But that's a, another way to adjust it. So I just want you to be aware of that. 
Okay, now keep in mind too, with the pressure curve, you know, you obviously also have the option to pull this forward and back. So you're gonna to wanna to test that as well. The best way is gonna to be to do incremental adjustments and then test it. And you're also gonna to wanna to test it based upon the brushes that you use. For instance, I have this kind of set for what I like to draw and ink with. And then, you know, maybe painting isn't as accurate as I like, but you gotta find that happy medium where you're not having to constantly adjust this or you just get very good at utilizing this and making the adjustments rather quickly. Uh, you also want to be aware of the speed in which you create the mark. You know, a lot of times you're going to get a smoother line by a quick stroke like that. Uh, so you want to test all these different things in conjunction with one another uh, and really kind of figure out what works best for your style of creation. Again, it's probably going to be a di bit different if you're inking a comic versus digitally painting a character, something like that. So the other thing before we go on to the next lesson, I just want you to be aware there is another setting inside of the brushes themselves. So when you go to the brush itself, you click that, you're gonna get all these, you know, this plethora of other options. We're gonna talk about some of these as they pertain to what we create. Uh, but keep in mind that there's a bunch of other settings under pencil right here. So as you go through all these different options when you're creating brushes, and we're gonna do a section where we create some brushes and talk about this, but uh, you can see that you have a pencil option here that relates to the Apple Pencil uh, in this case. And then you can, you know, adjust some of these settings based on angle, opacity, gradation. I mean, those are all, all pretty cut and dry. Uh, size compression, I guess we can test that real quick. So if I was to do a stroke across the screen like that, toggle this off, do another one. You know, I'll be honest, I don't see a whole lot of difference other than it well, that could have just been the way I did the brush stroke. It felt like it tapered off there. Uh, but I, I'll tell you, I always adjust something and then shift it back for fear that I might adjust too many things and then not map where I'm going. Uh, so just be very aware of that. You, you know, you're just going to have to test these and see what works best. But again, a lot of them are pretty cut and dry. Opacity and gradation, angle of the tilt, uh, things like that. And then also it's going to generally, in most cases as you adjust this, it's going to give you a visual guide up here as well as to what it's doing. So we could adjust the pressure setting to the size. See what that does for us. Feels kind of the same. And a lot of times I will go pretty dramatic, but again, paying attention to what exactly I'm shifting, uh, not just shifting it and definitely not just leaving it and then shifting something else. It's a great way to kind of back yourself into a corner. I like having the max ability to taper it. So I'm actually gonna put that all the way up as it pertains to inking because generally I want a nice thin line to the, um, you know, the edge, the taper that I like when I do my cross hatching and things like that. So some of these lessons, we're gonna kind of overlap parts of what you see in here. And we're gonna do some that are screen grabs after I explain enough of the gesture controls and kind of how this functions. Uh, Cause I think it'll be more conducive with the lessons that I'm gonna give you. Uh, so with that, let's move on to the next lesson.